Hi there, folks. Today we're looking at graphing polynomial functions, and uh, really this is kind of an extension of what we've already done in terms of graphing. We've drawn quick sketches of these things where we identified, uh, you know, the x-intercepts and the uh, kind of the path that the function follows. We're going to do that same kind of thing here, um, but we're going to use graphing calculators and computer programs to kind of fill in the gaps to make these a little bit more of an accurate representation of the graph, all right? So yeah, we're going to start with this idea of, okay, what does this thing kind of look like? What is it supposed to look like? And then we're going to use the calculator uh, to give us a more accurate depiction of, of that path of the function or the shape of the function. And then we're going to identify all the important points on the function, all right? And this is slightly different than the way we've graphed a lot of uh, other things because instead of having like, uh, you know, exact values marked out on our graph, okay, because some of these values get really big or really small, all right, we're just going to draw uh, kind of a model of this thing where we label the important points but don't necessarily count to them. Okay? And you kind of see what I mean as we go through this. It'll be slightly different. We won't have like the little tick marks on our graph, um, but we'll still label those things uh, using ordered pairs to show the accuracy, to show exactly where this thing uh, kind of goes to. All right. Uh, for example, if I look at this first one, so kind of looking at this from the approach of what we already know in terms of drawing a quick sketch of this thing, what we already know how to do is when it's in factored form like this, we can easily find the x-intercepts, all right? The computer or the uh, graphing calculator will also be able to do that for us, uh, but a lot of times it's easier to do by hand when it's in this format. So we say, hey, if this thing equals zero, let's find the x-intercepts. I've set each of these uh, factors equal to zero. And I solve each here. This one, I would add the 1. Here, I would add the 3. And here, I would subtract the 2. So I get these ordered pairs, 1, 0, 3, 0, and negative 2, 0. And then from here, I'm not going to draw on, the, on my graph off to the side over here. I'm just going to draw a quick sketch uh, maybe over, uh, over here, an unofficial kind of sketch. And so if I kind of look at this unofficial sketch, I've got, let's see, a 1, a 3, and a 2 here. I also kind of know about the, uh, the path of this function by looking at the end behavior. And so when I look at the end behavior on this one, remember, I only want the first term of this thing multiplied out, so I only multiply out the first terms, okay? And each of these uh, binomials to the first power, so it's just x times x times x, which is x cubed. So if I were to multiply this out, I would get a 1x cubed. And again, if I continued to multiply out all three of those uh, all three of those binomials, which I can do, I would end up with a 1x cubed and a bunch of other terms. But again, I only care about the first one if I want to know the end behavior. And so an odd degree on this one, uh, if the degree is odd and uh, the leading coefficient is a positive, it means that this end is going to go down and this end is going to go up. Okay? And then based on how many times I got each of these answers, because each of those binomials only occurs once, I get each of those answers only once, which means in terms of multiplicity, the path has to be something that kind of goes like this. Okay? And I know it's supposed to look kind of like that. Now, there might be some details in there that I'm missing, so maybe it could do something like this. It's possible that it kind of goes like this, and then it has like an inflection, and does all kinds of stuff like that. For this particular example, it's not going to do that, all right? But there might be some details that, that we don't know about uh, that'll kind of appear as we graph this thing uh, using some of our graphing uh, um, uh, utilities and that kind of thing, our, our calculators and, and the... Uh, um, Desmos is the other one that we'll use, okay? And so we have this idea of a quick sketch. That'll help us when we look at the calculator or when we look at the computer to make sure I find all those important values. See, right away, I can see there's a relative maximum between the negative 2 and the positive 1. Uh, there's a relative minimum between the positive 1 and the positive 3, okay? So let's go look at the graph of this actual thing. All right, so the first thing I do on the graphing calculator here is I hit this Y equals button. Uh, that's going to take me to the graphing menu, so I hit Y equals. And then I just punch in my function. And, you know, the, the graphing calculator has Y equals. Our function says F of X equals. It's the same thing, so we're just going to punch it in. So, uh, and just use the same parentheses. Here's the uh, variable button for the X. Make sure you use a minus sign here instead of a negative sign. Okay. 
And then once I have this thing punched in, sorry, I have a, there we go. And once I have this thing punched in, I'm going to graph it. So I hit this little graph button right here. It just says graph. And I get a graph of this thing. And, you know, depending on what I see, I might have to adjust the graph a little bit. Um, for this particular example, I am going to change it just a little bit. Uh, and I always want to change it. Uh, using the zoom buttons is typically not very great. If I want to reset the graph, I'll go into zoom and go to zoom standard. Um, but other than that, the rest of the zoom features don't work very well. I'm going to go to window and adjust it by hand. And right now I'm at zoom standard, which is 10 in each direction. So 10 up, 10 down, 10 left, 10 right. And uh, I'm just going to adjust that window so I can see a little bit, uh, so I can almost zoom in on this. I don't need as many X values as I have, so I'm going to go negative 5 uh, to positive 5. And now I'm going to hit graph again, just so I can see this thing a little bit clearer. Um, because with the TI graphing calculator, we have to click on a bunch of little points around these things in order to find them. Uh, so here we go. I already have the X intercepts, which is good. Um, I could find the X intercepts on the graphing calculator, but I'll show you that in the next example when we don't already have them. So the only thing that I'm not sure about right now is uh, the, the Y intercept and the uh, relative maximums and minimums. So let's start with the Y intercept. All of these are going to be under the calculation menu of the graph uh, for the graphing menus. And when you look up here, these, uh, these buttons at the top are all graphing buttons. But above those, the secondary version of those buttons, one of them right here says calc. So above the trace button, you see calc. So you hit second. And then that trace button for calc. And to find the y-intercept, we just have to plug a 0 in for x. And this very first one, value, that allows us to plug x values in. So I hit value, and then I choose an x value of 0. So I hit 0, and I hit enter, and it goes to that ordered pair. So it shows me the x value of 0, and then whatever the y value is that goes with it. So I've got the ordered pair 0, 6, so that's my y-intercept. So I write that down off to the side here. And next, I want to do the relative maximums and minimums. So I'm going to go to that Calculate menu again. So Calculate. Oops, sorry. And for the uh, relative uh, maximum, I'm going to go down to number 4 that says Maximum, and I hit Enter. And you notice uh, down here it says left bound with a crest question mark, and there's a little blinking graphic here, that dot. If I hit the, the left and right arrows, it moves that uh, blinking dot back and forth. And so that idea of left bound is I have to narrow this down for the calculator, so I have to go to the left of that relative maximum. So I keep scrolling over till I'm to the left of the maximum, and I hit Enter. And then it says right bound with a question mark. So I keep going until I'm to the right of that maximum value, and I hit Enter. And then it says guess with a question mark, so I want to get as close as I can to that maximum value and hit Enter again. And it narrows it down for me. So then down at the bottom, it has the x value and the y value displaying as an ordered pair. Uh, so it's a negative 0.786 uh, for the x. And you can just round that off to a couple decimal places. And then the 8.209 uh, for the uh, y value. Okay. So I write that down off to the side. I'll put this all in the graph at once when I'm done here. So we get that value copied down. And now I'm going to go back into the calculate menu. So second calculate. This time I want to do a minimum. And the minimum, once again, is the same thing. So for the minimum value, value it says left bound. So I have to be to the left of the minimum over here somewhere. I hit Enter. And then I have to go to the right of the minimum, so right bound, and hit Enter. And then it says take a guess. So I get as close as I can. I think I could do better. And I hit Enter. And it spits out these values and uh, approximates it for me. So it's an X value of... Uh, uh, 2.11 uh, uh, looks like that 9 rounds off, up, so 2.12. And then the y value is negative 4.061. Uh, and so I write those values down, and then I'll come back over to the graph uh, in order to plot these things and kind of draw my version of, the, of, this, of this graph of this sketch, okay? And so from the graphing utility, here's what we've got. Uh, we looked at this and, and saw that, you know, the graph, we, uh, our, our sketch wasn't too bad. It, it does go up like this and then comes back down and then back up again. Okay, so our, our kind of quick sketch was good. Uh, we can make it a little bit nicer as we uh, draw this thing. So now I'm translating that. And again, we draw the quick sketch just to kind of give us an idea of the shape of this thing. And then to show all of these different pieces, we're just going to label them. So like here, I'm going to label this. And instead of having these little tick marks all drawn, I'm just going to label this ordered pair negative 2, 0. 
And if I do the rest of the x-intercepts here, let's see, that's a 1, 0. This one was the uh, 3, 0. And again, we already knew these even before we looked at the actual graph. But what the actual graph then gave us was these guys. It gave us this rel relative uh, maximum here. And that was the ordered pair negative uh, 0.786 comma 8.209. And then down here, this relative minimum. Again, we got a one, uh, sorry, a 2.12, uh, negative 4.061, okay? And so we, we kind of copied all those things down from the graph, and now we, ch we put them on here. And again, the graph isn't completely accurate in terms of, I didn't draw all the little tick marks uh, and kind of show this thing around 8.2 for that first relative maximum. I show the accuracy by writing an ordered pair, okay? So I draw a sketch that gives me an idea of the shape of this thing, and then I, I give it accuracy and I, I give it more context by including all of these really special points and showing exactly where those things are. Okay? And so even if this thing isn't necessarily drawn to scale in terms of the actual curve and in terms of the relationship between the x and the y axis and how far apart those, those little tick marks are and that kind of stuff, that's okay because I still have an idea of the accuracy of this thing based on the ordered pairs that I have written down. Okay? And you can even tell in this drawing right here, right here from, from this relative maximum down to the axis, that's eight units. And here, that's negative four. Really, if I was drawing this to scale, uh, that negative four should probably be up here somewhere. Okay? But again, we, we understand that this is just giving us the shape. The accuracy is based on the values I have written. So we're not necessarily drawing it to scale. We want a good representation of this thing. Okay? Uh, if I look at this next one, same kind of thing, except this time I uh, don't have this thing in my factored form. I could factor it. All right, so I could try factoring it and finding the x-intercepts and that kind of stuff. Um, but really, we don't need to do that. Uh, we just need to understand, okay, an x to the fourth function, I kind of have an idea of what that might look like. So if, again, I only look at the first value here, I already know the end behavior. And just based on our knowledge of some of these other things that I've dealt with, if I know the end behavior, so even degree, so they're both going to open up or down since the leading coefficient is positive, both ends are going to open up. So I know both ends are going to open up. And just knowing what I know about these different functions, well, this thing might do something like this, okay? Or maybe it crosses the axis more times. It might do something more like this, okay? Or it could do something like this. So... Again, I, I have a general idea of what this thing looks like or what it could look like, but now I'm going to use the graph to kind of get a little bit more detail on those things, okay? So I'm going to punch this in. I'm going to find all the important values, including the x-intercepts, and then I'm going to draw a more accurate depiction of this thing, okay? So once again, on my graphing calculator here, I go to the uh, um, y equals menu, which will allow me to graph this thing. So I hit y equals. And then I punch this in, so again, x. And then you've got to use this little caret button over here to the fourth power. That's how we type x to the fourth power on our calculator. Uh, minus 4x to the third power. And then plus the 2. Okay? And then once again, we're just going to hit this graph button. And we can see this time... Uh, that uh, we kind of have an idea what this thing looks like, and it doesn't quite look like the, the quick sketch that we drew, although it does have a little bit of the same curvature. Uh, this first curve right here just isn't as defined as the one we have over here. So we had a really deep curve. This one just has a very slight curve that comes back, and then a much deeper curve for the second one, okay? And so uh, I can't really see all the details here. I need to go a little bit lower. And again, I don't want to use the zoom values here because the zoom buttons are going to zoom me in and out, and it's going to um, kind of mess up some of the x values uh, uh, that I see. What I want to do is I want to adjust the window. So right now, I can see plenty in terms of x. In fact, I can afford to lose some of the x values, but I have to go a little bit lower in terms of the y values. So I'm going to hit the window button. And uh, for x, I'm going to change this to negative 5 and positive 5. I'm going to condense that a little bit because I don't need to see much further. But the thing I need to change, I need to see lower, so I need to change the y minimum. So I'm going to change this to maybe a negative uh, 
Um, and we just take a guess. I'm going to go negative 30 because I've done this one before, and I think that's enough to, to get me there. And then I hit graph. And there it is. Now I can see this thing a little bit clearer, okay? And so then from here, um, I want to find all these values. I'm going to start with the x-intercepts, all right? And so for the x-intercepts, we haven't done this one yet. We're going to hit second calculate, so we're going to do the calculate menu. The x-intercepts are also known as zeros of the function. Zeros, roots, x-intercepts all mean the same thing, solutions. So I'm going to go down to number two, zeros, and I hit enter. And notice it gives me this, this familiar left bound uh, question mark. And so as I look at this thing, like if I scroll over, that's right there is approximately where the x-intercept is. So I just go left of that. So I go to the left of that, and I hit enter. And then I have to go to the right of that point and make sure that you cross the axis. Make sure that this y value is now negative and hit enter. And then take a guess. We get as close as we can to that x-intercept and I hit an enter. And it tells me that this thing is about a 0.86 comma zero. And we can see the y value of zero there, okay? So I write that, that ordered pair down off to the side. We'll come back to it later. And now I'm gonna calculate the other one. So second, calculate. And once again, I want to do a zero. And so I have to scroll over. And it's a little bit of a pain with the TI here, scrolling around to find these, but it is what it is. And so I want to be to the left. The left this time is underneath as we kind of look at the curvature of this thing. So left bound, I hit Enter. And then I have to go to the right and hit Enter. And now I have to take a guess, and I can't get any closer than the two uh, left bound, right bounds that I had. So just make sure that I'm at least on one of those. I can't go outside of that. I can't go here uh, because it'll give me an error. I have to at least be um, as close, if not closer, than either of my left bound or right bound. So I hit enter. And it gives me a 3.968, comma uh, zero. So I write that order pair down off to the side. I'll come back to it later. Now I can move on to something like the y-intercept. The y-intercept, remember, we do second calculate. We're going to calculate a value, and the y-intercept occurs when the x value equals 0. So I punch a 0 in, and that gives me a, a y-intercept uh, of 2, uh, which would have been really easy to find from the um, equation itself by plugging a 0 in. We didn't really need the calculator for that. And now I want to find the, the relative uh, minimum. There's only one this time because this curve kind of keeps, you know, I, I get this little bit of a curve over here, but it doesn't give me a relative minimum this time. It's not as exaggerated as the, the, the sketch that I had drawn earlier, okay? And so, again, this is what's helping me get a little bit more accuracy here. So I'm going to second calculate. I want to do a minimum value this time, so number three. And again, left bound, right bound guess. So I have to go scrolling down towards this minimum. So to the left, enter. To the right, enter. And then get as close as possible and hit enter. And it gives me uh, 3.000001. Uh, uh, 3, negative 25. And here's the thing. Uh, the calculator, even if this is exact, this is probably exactly 3, negative 25. But the calculator sometimes has a little bit of trouble. Again, we're narrowing it down. So sometimes we'll have a little bit of error uh, that occurs here. And so that, uh, that, that's just a little bit of round off error. It really means, say, 3, negative 25. So we write that order pair down, uh, take it off to the side here, and now we'll go back to our graph. We'll draw our sketch of this thing and fill in all the details, okay? And so uh, from the graph, I found out that, you know, my uh, quick sketch here wasn't exactly right. Uh, instead of having two relative minimums, I only had one. The function did still have more turning points, but it kind of went like this. It kind of came down this way and then curved that way and then curved back down and then back up, okay? And so I still get more uh, curvatures, but this guy wasn't extended out as much as we thought it was going to be. Instead of this thing going like this and then coming back up and down, it kind of just curved uh, like it was going to start back up, but then went down instead, okay? And so, again, we knew where to look for that thing. We knew to look somewhere uh, uh, towards that, that left-hand side that there was going to be some kind of curve we needed to mimic. Well, it just didn't end up being exactly the way we thought it would be. Okay? And then uh, from the, uh, uh, the graphing device, we uh, just cal calculated or found all of these values. So we had this guy that was at a 6, 0. Or sorry, 2, 0. Sorry, I looked at the wrong note that I had. Uh, this one was a 0 0.86, comma, 0. 
Uh, this other x-intercept over here was uh, uh, 3.97, uh, I rounded it off just a little bit, comma zero. And then the relative minimum down here, that was a 3, negative 25, okay? And so the only value that uh, uh, surprisingly uh, came out nicely was that relative minimum. The x-intercepts, we wouldn't have been able to find those by factoring, so the calculator, uh, the, uh, the computer really helped us out on that one, okay? So now, again, even though this thing isn't drawn to scale, if it was drawn to scale, this uh, relative minimum would be way, way, way down here, probably even further down than that. But instead of having this huge graph, I condense it a little bit. I don't quite draw it to scale, but I draw an accurate representation or an accurate enough representation of the shape, and then I add accuracy to it, I add context to it by labeling all of those special points, okay? Uh, if I look at this one, this is one where I can get a little bit more information before I graph it. So once again, I could set this equal to zero because it's in factored form, and I could find the x-intercepts ahead of time. Okay, so if I set each factor equal to zero, uh, here I get x equals zero, so that's the ordered pair zero, zero. Here I would add the six and get x equals six, so that's the ordered pair six, zero. But then there's also something special here. Because of this guy, uh, because there's an x to the first out here, I'm going to get that answer once. That's multiplicity. But look at this, because there's an x squared here, it means I would get this answer twice, okay? And so that idea of multiplicity gives us a little bit more information about the, the sketch of the graph here. Again, looking at just the leading coefficient and the degree, if I were to multiply out these things, so that would be just the first terms, so this guy squared is an x squared, and then times the negative 2x. And so, again, just looking at those first terms... Again, if this guy was squared, it would be an x squared, and then times just this first term. So I just look at all the first terms and I multiply it out. That gives me the first term of the, the overall polynomial. It's a negative, sorry, 2. Reading is hard sometimes, right? A negative 2x to the third, okay? And again, if I were to completely multiply this thing out, which I could do, I could do x minus 6 times itself, multiply all that out, then distribute the negative 2x, if I did that, I would end up with a negative 2x cubed and a bunch of other values. But again, I don't care about those values. I just wanted the first one. And so because it's a cubed function, it's an odd function with a negative leading coefficient, I know that this end is going to go up and this end is going to go down. Okay? I also know these intercepts here, this guy and this guy. And I know a little bit more about this because as this thing comes down here, and let me move this guy over a little bit, as I approach this first value, I'm going to go through the x-axis because the multiplicity is odd. But right here, this one, I'm only going to touch the x-axis. And that has to deal with this guy right here, that idea of multiplicity. Remember, when the multiplicity is odd, it tells me to keep going through the axis. Okay? But when the multiplicity is even, it tells me to do a relative maximum or relative minimum at that point. It tells me to just touch the thing. Okay? And so the end behavior all matches up. I kind of have an idea what this graph looks like, but now let's go get a more accurate representation. Okay? All right, so once again, we go into the y equals menu, so we can graph this thing, and I punch this in. Uh, make sure you use the negative sign for that, too. That's down here. Uh, it's in a little set of parentheses. That's negative 2. Uh, x, and then the parentheses, x. This one uh, is a minus sign, so the minus sign, the subtraction sign. Uh, there is a slight distinction between those on the graphing calculator. Um, if, for example, I had put in a negative 6 instead of the minus 6, it would treat that as x times a negative 6, like a negative 6x, and messes everything up. So be careful between negative signs versus minus signs. And now I hit graph. And uh, for this one, the graph kind of looks like gibberish at first. But again, think about my, my quick sketch. I understand what's happening here. I just... I just can't see all of it. So it's just telling me that I needed to change my zoom a little bit. And when you look, I certainly don't need it to go any further to the left based on my quick sketch. Um, I don't really need to go any further to the right based on my quick sketch. I just need to go down further, okay? Uh, so I'm going to change the window. I am going to change the y minimum. I certainly don't need to see that many values. So I'm going to make it a little smaller. But then the y minimum I need to change. And uh, I'm just going to take a guess here, uh, negative 50 or something like that, okay? And I don't think this will be enough. But uh, So here it is. When we look at this thing, 
much closer, but I still can't see what's going on right now, okay? So I have to go a little bit further. And sometimes it'll take a couple guesses here. So let's change this to maybe like a negative 70. Oh, I hit negative 71. I guess that's good. Let's graph it. And there we go. Now I can see enough of this thing. And, you know, maybe as I look at this, you know, it, it kind of gets lost in here around that zero, zero. Um, and if I want to, I could go back to the window and I could change the the Y maximum to maybe something like 20, just to give myself a little bit of a better idea. Now we can start to see that little piece up here. But again, we already have that in our quick sketch. We know what's happening up to here. We just need to figure out what's happening with the rest of this thing, okay? And uh, when I think about this, I already have my Y intercept. I already have both of my X intercepts because uh, I, I found each of those. The Really, the only thing I need to find is this relative minimum that's down here. I already have the relative maximum uh, because it's my x-intercept, it's that 6, 0, okay? And so uh, I go to uh, uh, second calculate, uh, down to minimum, and here it is, that left-bound, right-bound guess, so I have to go to the left of that minimum point, hit enter, the right of the minimum point, and hit enter, and then I get as close as possible and take a guess, okay? And uh, this one's another interesting one. Once again, the calculator had a little bit of an error here, and that's okay. We just have to understand that and make sure we round appropriately. But it said the X value is 1.9999989989, okay? And so this is really just an error on the calculator's part because it's trying to narrow it down. It just missed by a little bit, okay? Because that left-bound, right-bound guess, we're just narrowing it down. The calculator meant to say 2 here. If you round it off, it rounds up to a 2. It's actually the exact value of 2, negative 64 for this one. It's just a little bit of error with the calculator, okay? So I write that 2, negative 64 down off to the side, and now I can go uh, fill out my graph uh, on the sheet and label all those important points, okay? Uh, and so for this one, I, I found out that my graph wasn't in too bad a shape. Um, I have the, these values here. Um, but in terms of the shape, this thing comes pretty steeply down and then back up and down again, okay? And so we get this, uh, this slightly more accurate representation. The thing that really makes it accurate, though, is all the values that I, I got from the graph. And so right here, this was the, the ordered pair 0, 0. Again, I already knew that one. This one was the ordered pair 6, 0. But then I also was able to pick up this relative minimum at 2, negative 64, okay? And so again, I have a sketch that represents the shape of the graph. I have all these points that represent the accuracy of the graph and all those special points that I need, okay? And not only that, but now I can see the relative maximums, the relative minimums. I would be able to interpret this in a little bit uh, of, a, of a better way, okay? If I look at this one, once again, I could try to solve this thing by factoring, but let's let the calculator do the work for us. Now that we have a better idea of what these things kind of look like, again, maybe I look at the end behavior on this one because I've got a, a one-fourth uh, x to the fourth. Again, I only look at this first value. I don't care about the rest of them written. I know it's only one other one. But I just look at this guy and say, hey, the degree is four, so an even degree. They're both going to either open up or down, both ends. And because the leading coefficient is positive, I know that both ends are going to open up. So right away, just thinking about the quick sketch of the graph, both ends open up. And again, I don't know about the details. Maybe this thing goes like this, okay? Uh, maybe this thing uh, goes like uh, this. Maybe it does uh, one of these things, all right? Uh, maybe it does one of the things that it did before, where uh, this thing kind of curves this way and does something like this, okay? Well, we know that it's going to be something in that vein, but we're going to get a more accurate representation by graphing this thing using a calculator using the computer, okay? So let's go take a look at the graph this time. All right, this one, once again, I go into the Y equals menu. And to punch this in, uh, for the graphing calculator, sometimes it's easier just to punch this in as a decimal. So I can punch that one-fourth in as a 0.25 or just use uh, uh, some parentheses and a division sign. So I'll type in one-fourth using a division sign like this. Um, that's the easiest way to punch some of these things in. Uh, some of the newer ones do have uh, fraction abilities in the uh, submenus, but really not worth it, okay? Uh, so I punch this in 1 fourth x to the fourth uh, minus the 2x squared. And now I go ahead and I graph the thing, ready? Graph, 
And once again, I've reset this thing to be at zoom standard. If yours doesn't look like this, uh, you might be zoomed kind of way out. Uh, yours might look, uh, you know, more like this, where you can't see any of the details. And so as we're looking at this thing, we know that there should be kind of two curves in there. So I probably have to zoom in. And one of the things that I'll always do is I'll hit zoom and I'll go down to number six, zoom standard, just as a way to kind of reset this thing. I always start with zoom standard. And now from here, I'll adjust the window, okay? So now I can adjust the window from here. And uh, it looks like I didn't need to quite go as far uh, left and right as uh, what we had. So I'm going to call it uh, negative 7, positive 7. And then I didn't have to go as far down as I went. I'll go negative 7 on that one as well. And even I, uh, up, I didn't have to go very far. So I'm going to just kind of reset these just so I can zoom in just a little bit and uh, see uh, this thing with a little bit more accuracy, OK? Uh, that'll make it a little bit easier to do my left bound, right bound guesses. And so once again, uh, here I go. I'm going to go uh, 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 second calculate. And uh, I'm going to start with the uh, x-intercepts, which are the zeros. So I go down to zeros, and I hit Enter. And notice it's got that left bound, right bound guess. So I have to scroll over to this first one. Left bound, Enter. Go to the right, Enter. And then get as close as possible and hit Enter. And it gives me a negative uh, 2.828 comma zero, so I write that down, save it for later. I'm going to do the next uh, x-intercept as well, so I go second calculate, uh, zero. And I've got to scroll over to the other one. Quite a bit of clicking here. And so once again, uh, left bound to the left of this thing is down here, to the right is up here, and then I take a guess is right here. And uh, we notice this is a 2.828, so this thing is uh, seeming to be symmetrical at this point, uh, which is uh, identical to the other x-intercept I have, but in the positive direction. Uh, and so I write that order pair down, uh, the 2.8280. And now I'm going to move on. Uh, let's do the relative, uh, uh, well, let's do the relative maximum next. Notice there was one x-intercept that I skipped. And the reason I skipped it is because here's what's going to happen if I try to calculate this thing. If I try to calculate a zero, uh, a lot of times the calculator has trouble with these because I go left, right, and then I hit enter. A lot of times it'll give me an error message there. Oh, this one actually worked um, because the sign didn't change. It's used to finding x-intercepts where it crossed the axis. We can see the x-intercept there is zero, zero, um, and really we understand, hopefully, that that is a relative uh, maximum. Uh, you're better off finding it as a maximum, so doing the maximum as left bound, right bound guess, um, because it'll get it as a maximum every time. But every once in a while, it has trouble uh, finding those intercepts uh, that are relative minimums and maximums. Okay, And so we can see that that order pair 0, 0 is an x-intercept, but it's also our y-intercept and our relative maximum. Okay. And so now relative minimums, second calculate, uh, down to minimum. Again, left bound, right bound guess. I'm going to do this one off to the left first. So left bound, uh, right bound, and then take a guess. And it gives me a negative 2 with a bunch of zeros. Again, it's a little bit of round off error on the calculator's part. It meant to say negative 2 exactly. So it's negative 2, negative 4. And uh, if we're assuming this thing is symmetrical, the other one is going to be uh, positive 2, negative 4, but let's check it. Second calculate, uh, minimum, and then I head on over. So here we go, left bound, right bound, and guess. Okay. And uh, you notice it looks like it's almost identical to the previous answer. Um, the round off error is a little bit different this time. And again, the calculator meant to say exactly that value of 2, so it's 2, negative 4. But there is some round off error sometimes as it tries to narrow this down. OK, so now I go off to my graph. I draw the sketch of this thing, label all the critical points, and then I'm done. And so after looking at the graph, I found that this thing was, uh, was perfectly symmetrical. And so I had something that kind of looked like this, where I had one end that went like that, and then a second end that did the exact same thing. Okay, And uh, everything was symmetrical as I labeled these values. So like the, the uh, uh, x-intercepts, uh, this guy was at negative 2.828, uh, comma 0. 
The other one over here was at a positive 2.828 comma zero. Of course, uh, this guy in the middle, that's at zero, zero. And then I identified these relative minimums, and those were also symmetrical. This one was at a negative two, negative four. And this one was at positive two, negative four. Okay, so again, I, I get the shape of this thing. I draw a quick sketch that, that represents what this thing should look like, but then I give it accuracy. I give it context by labeling all of those crucial points, okay? Relative maximums, relative minimums, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, okay?